what year? Pig. Is anyone uh, any pig here? Oh, really? Wow, so many. That's amazing. <laughs> There's many story about pigs. Pigs are lovely. I hope you guys are lovely as these guys. But how many of you have seen a real, or have not seen a real pig? None of them? Okay, that's good. You know, in the current stage, or the current era, when we're living in a city, the modern time, we're living in the box of the bricks, or the wooden, you know, the board. It's, it's kind of a extremely isolated from the nature. Where are we being created? Where are we supposed to live? In the garden, in the forest, by the river. But there, the nature is amazing because it's not only a creation, but it carries messages. It carries messages. Throughout the history, you're going to see God deliver His voice through the nature things. Through the nature things. In the, when He called Abraham, what He pointed to Abraham about his, his promise? The stars. Look at the stars. That's going to be the size. The picture of your offsprings, just countless. And uh, there was time, there's no Bible. There was time, there's only Old Testament. But God continually delivered his messages through the nature. It's like said, the heavens declares the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hand. Day after day, they pour false speech. Night and night, they reveal knowledge through the nature. And then he said, they have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the us. How many of you have been struggling to seek God, or to fear God, or to ask question, where is God? Very often, right, we don't see God. Or we have to see it in the Bible study. Or we have to see the God in certain uh, Sunday worship. And we miss a lot because God speaks to us every day through everything. Through everything. If we look at the, the voice of the God in the Bible, how he, how he delivers his message to his people, you're going to be amazed. If you look at this picture, what does it remind you about? It's on cell phone or on uh, screen. What is it? This is the recording of the Genesis, right? What happened? Grace? You see a bird, right? You see a leaves. In this case, now I send out a dove to see whether the land is dry. And when the dove had a uh, leaf in his pigs, then he knows it's time to go out. That's how God delivered his message. And uh, when we think about David, David is a shepherd. When he look at things, look at his sheep, what he feels, he realizes how God shepherded him like he shepherded the sheep. And he, Jesus, and what did he say? For Jesus, Jesus also teaches through animal. Any example? Emily, you not? How about this one? 
Look at the bird of the air. They neither sow or reap, nor gather into barns, and get your heavenly Father fed them. Get your heavenly Father fed And uh, another example, Jesus said, I'm sending you out as what? As sheep among the world. Be uh, as wary as snake and harmless as dogs. See how these animals deliver the characters of different people. The environment is so easy to catch. It's so easy to catch. It's kind of sad because for us, sometimes it's so hard to describe how, how, how dangerous the world is. Can we? We don't. Actually, we're only by listening. We've never been exposed to them. <coughs> because we are not among them. We never lived with them. That is the, that is the uh, tragedy for, 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 for human beings, because right <coughs> with the tech, development of technology, we kind of get far and far away from what we're supposed to be. We've been isolated from many things we're su supposed to be. Not only the world, probably we think, oh, that's good. And we're isolated with, among each other, actually, in the family, because of the technology. If you think about that, recall the time with your family, with your parents, with your kids, because of the technology in our hands. We kind of isolated it because probably ten years later, or tens of years later, when we try to recall when was the time, you know, being with parents, with brothers and sisters, playing on in the playground, in the in the garden. It's hard to recall. We only can imagine, just like the way we imagine the dangers of world. We have to be aware of that because in the Bible, keep telling us the nature tells the things. The nature tells the things. And today's passage is in Proverbs 30. And it says, Four things on us are small, yet they are extremely wise. Ants are creatures of little strength. Yet they stop up their food in the summer. Hyraxes are creatures of little power. Yet they make their home in the grass. Locusts have no king. Yet they advance together in ranks. A lizard can be caught with the hand. Yet it is his found in King Alexis. These short passages, four animals. It's clearly delivered the message from God. The title of the sermon, maybe a series of the sermon, I titled The Preachers, Little Preachers. When we see these little things, we see messages. It's so clear, so strong. It's so clear, so strong. The, this chapter is a chapter like follow all the previous chapter is by King Agra. It is not clear who Agra is, who was, okay. But clearly this is a selection of his problems and his observation. At the beginning of this chapter, basically at the beginning of what he's gonna talk about, he has this saying like that, I am very God, but I can prevail. Surely I am only a brute, and it's very bad, but not a man, not a man. I do not have human understanding. This is his understanding of himself. I'm, you know, very bad. I have no learned, I have not learned wisdom, nor have I attained to the knowledge of the Holy One. And then what he said, who has come up to the heaven and come down? Whose hands have gathered up the wind? Who has wrapped up the water in a crock? Who has established all the end of the earth? 
What is his name? And what is the name of his son? Surely you know. This is his understanding of God. He's a mighty. He cannot be understood. He admit, I am so dumb because I'm so worried, I'm so brutal, but I just cannot understand that. But you are, you know. So this is a contrast between man and uh, God. And the thing he tried to make the contrast is what? Who has gone up to heaven? Right? Who has hand gathered up the wind? All the big things in the nature. And he says, this thing is really out of human control, but God, you know everything. Follow this statement, he has a series of descriptions on different things. It's all grouped at four, 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 four. And in the middle of it, he has come to the statement we just read. The act. Here what he described are four things on us. Very small, that extremely wise. What are the four things? Ant. When we think about the ant, what is the picture of the ant? I think the first is very small, right? It's so small. But what the what what is said? Yet they store up their food in the summer with little. Ants are creatures of little strength. They're so powerless, so small, yet they know how to store food in the summer. This is one. And then he talked about the heretics. What is heretics? Anyone des describe that for me? Some translate it as pony. It's a little creature. It's not that little, but it's very, very... Uh, very, very, with little power. It's like a rabbit, but it cannot run like a rabbit. It's like a hedgehog hawk. Well, it, it just cannot dig like a hedgehog. So it's just like a fat little thing. <laughs> cannot run, cannot dig, nowhere to hide. And now where they stay? They stay in the rock. That is the message you hear said, yet they make their home in the cracks. Wow, this is how many times in the Bible mentioned about rock. You are my rock. This is the rock, rock, rock. And this guy, a powerless. But they stay in the rock. They set, build their home in the rock. This is a lot of wisdom. Okay, this is a big message actually. That's what I'm gonna I'm gonna unpack next time. How do we a man little thing so powerless can survive? We need to find a what a rock. So he they cannot run. Look at look at them. But they survive very well. They get a beautiful scene. And they can, you know, lie on this rock to enjoy the song. And then they immediately can stay away from danger. This is a Harris. Okay. And then what did they mention? Locust. If think about when you think about the locust, what 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 is in your mind? You cannot imagine, you never imagine a locust like one by one. It always appears like an army. Everywhere. This is like a disaster if you have a locust, you know, the, the, the army is called what? Slum or swarm. swarm, right? It's a swarm. It's a big. Everything, if you, they only just need to fly through. Then you're going to look at everything's gone. In minutes, seconds, because they just are so powerful. How it describes locusts have no king. Such a big mission, 
like swipe everything, and then they, they don't, they're not organized. Looks like there's no one organized. However, they what? They make the uh, they advance together in ranks, advance like that in ranks without king. That describes the power of being together. And the power and the foundation of everything is inside of each of them. They don't, the command coming from the inside, not outside, because there's no king. However, they know how to move. That is the big, big thing for the church. When we're talking about our relationship with God, who are we? We are priests, we are soldiers, we are disciples of Jesus Christ. We never say, okay, I'm a dis disciple of Peter, I'm di Peter is my, my leader. No, we don't describe that way. Very often, who is the king? The Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ. And they are in each of us. That's why in the church you don't see a king or leader around, but you see everything move forward together. If every of us, each of us, has the Holy Spirit inside of us. That is the message. The last message, it said it's a lizard. However, there's an other translation because this part is different. It's difficult to translate. But I like the translation of the spider better because what is described there can be caught with hand, yet it is found <laughs> in king's palaces. It can be found in king's palaces. What does that mean? The king's house. That means. <laughs> What is the message about that? <laughs> but, yeah. So, you know, when you think about the spider, what is, he, what is uh, the most significant about it? It's everywhere. Right? You can think, oh, this is my bedroom. It's so, wow, I clean every day and, and I'm so proud of it. And then suddenly, in the corner or, you know, in the bed, there's a spider there. Right? They don't care, they can be anywhere, anywhere clean, you think it's even, you know, lawyer, they are there. That is the message, why? They survive everywhere. Why? They have the tool inside of them. They can make web everywhere, they don't need anything from outside to survive, to catch. They make a web to stay inside, they make the web to catch the insect, the flies, right? But whenever the wind could be, you know, blow them away, everything still is, as long as where, whenever they go, they can set up everything, you know, in minutes. Has a house, has a home, you know, stay and have everything ready to just uh, wait for the fly to or the insect to be caught. So these are the creatures mentioned here. These are the creatures mentioned in this message. I think there's a lot of a lot of teachings all the truths, all the instructions for us. So we're gonna unpack that in the next a few of the sermons. Now let's think about the message about these things. First, what is the first one? When we think about the, I think, the first message from all of them, I think is size does not matter. Size does not matter. This message from these small things, and you know, this probably won't be able to see if you don't know. Get close to them. They are so, the size tiny, the, the, the what? 
the capability, you know, look at the, the colony, the hybrids, is just the, with short legs, you know, cannot run, cannot dig, cannot do much. Those are all the things are very, very small and insignificant from the outside, physically. That is a big lesson in the Bible. Size does not matter. Size does not matter. If you think about that, this statement is proven true throughout the Bible. Think about those giants in the Bible mentioned. First, Abraham. What, who is Abraham? Is a big? He's 19 years old man, cannot give birth to any offspring. It's a Liu Lang Han. Second, who else? Moses is big. He's just a son of a slave. He's an orphan. David. Think about David. When he faced Goliath, right? What does he look like? He's a little boy. No one really, his brothers never said, what, why are you here? Go away. Little guys, Jesus, most humble way, come to the world. And his disciples, fishmen, tax collectors. This is a big principle in the church, <coughs> huge. But when we think about in our in the world, what we try to chase, the big giant things. You know this figure. What this figure present? Anyone can guess? This is of Africa. So this animal been called the big five. Big five. What are the big fives? Elephant, lion, buffalo, and the rhino. And what else? Lipa. They are all very, very significant in certain way. Giant, uh, elephant, just big. Because they call big five, you know, in Africa, all the time, there's a hunting games. These guys are the ones people are chasing. Because they are difficult. They are difficult in different ways. Just elephant is huge. Several tons of them. If an elephant approach you, what happens? The, the earth shakes. You, you, you see how powerful is that? They are giant. This is what? Hippo, right? Rhino. Rhino get the big horn. And they get the sick, head, uh, sick skin. They're very strong. It is and it's heavy. Rarely can any animal can hurt. It. And then what? Buffalo. What is buffalo? It's a big one. It also can run fast. And uh, this one even, you know the. Mouse, if you see a lion, then you're in really trouble. Not only big, but strong. And they have, the, have this powerful tool to attack. Right? Elephant probably big, but it won't, won't probably hurt you even. But this guy, look at his eye. It's scary. And this is even, even worse because it can run. It can climb tree. And it can eat you. It can bite. So all the big F5s are the things when we think about animal. If we want to go to Africa, what do we want to see? These guys, right? We don't want to see an end or something, or a little hyrax to stay in the rock. But these are the things in the nature, in our life also. We try to catch who? The giants. 
all in every aspect, area of the giants in our life. Because we just simply ignore the little ones. Is this a good message for the little ones? Right? But we don't, you know, this is uh, important. We are little in different kind of ways. Some people have a huge body, but they could have a little brain. So you don't simply be proud of myself, I'm so strong, look at me. But probably you have a little brain. Is that sad? It's sad, right? Some people probably have a strong arm, but they have a weak leg. It's just like that. Sometimes we just like to focus the part we either are strong, we are so proud of we are, we are so big in that part. All we focus on the part of we are very weak. And we say, oh, we are so no, little and so insignificant. We don't have confidence, lose everything. But it's not. Everyone has their own strengths. Everyone has their own weakness. So we have to look at everything in our life in a balanced way. Simply by looking at everything in a full lens, it's going to give us better understanding of, of our life and have a, have a more accurate way to estimate our own strengths. This is important because I know when I grow up, or even now, the thing I really care about, you know, the thing I don't care about, is it's just mixed. And, uh, and the evaluation I made on myself, on other people, very often just to make, make me either the wrong judgment or, you know, lead me to something, some wrong decisions. So we just simply know there is different, you know, the strengths in different way. If you look at the end, of course it's, it's weak, right? You can simply just kill it by that. But it had a strong thing there. Okay, I think this is something we need to, we need to think about it. But today we focus on ants. Where's my ants? Okay. I'll show you something about an amazing thing. Such a little thing, what it can do? It can cut. If I give you a slip, a leaf, can you make a thing like that? So beautifully? Not easy, I guess, right? But look at how big the size is compared to the ant. If I give you a big, what is called lettuce, the leaf of lettuce, like a size compared to this big. Can you use your mouse to make a, <laughs> make a hole or pick it up? It's difficult. Look at it. He can cut it so nice. And then he can carry it. He can carry it. And then what else is the ants can do? In this picture, the ants bring different leaves together. And then they can seal them link them, and then make a, a nest with leaves. And they can do this. What else? Okay, this one is more interesting. This one actually is described, what, what here is, when ants get a leaves, they can chop it into small pieces and then lay down in their uh, nest. And later on, what happened? There is fungus grow on this. And then this is a little mushroom. So the little mushroom grow out from the, the small pieces of the leaves. And the ant eat the mushroom. There's a white thing that the small mushroom bath. Is that amazing? Look at 
there's a different. You can chop, 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 and then pull them together, and then later on, because of the moisture in the nest, the, the ants just grow out a small mushroom, and then they eat it. All this kind of study being done depending on the technology. It's really amazing because think about the advance of science. It's really depending on how much we can just watch. Either very small, we can you know see the molecules, right, atoms, and all is very big, we can see the space. Everything like that. And with technology we can study this and then you know see this. Alright, so when you're talking about about all these things, when you think about the ants, definitely we know they can what? They can move things. Have you thought about that? With how big the thing the animal can move? It's a scientific question. If many of you guys try to study biology or you know try to think about to do research, you have to have like kind, this kind of observation. And the question, okay, the first question is, if the ants need a something like that, what is it going to do? Give you a project to study. What are you going to do? First, watch, right? Watch how the ants respond. Very often, in a case like that, you're going to see there's a more, this is a piece of uh, chips. You see more of more ants come to try to get it because one ant won't be able to do the job, right? Now there's a question. So if this one is small enough, so all the ants gonna pull towards the nest. That could be because if you look at the ants, they clearly can move food from where they can find it and then to where? To the place, right? Now the question is, with this one, if this is a food, so big, what do you think, if this is a nest, this is a food, how this food can be moved? What is the hypothesis you have? Because if it's small, every ant knows, okay, that direction, that direction, I'm going to go over there. But it's so big, every ant grab one piece of the thing, and then what they can move? Is the pool, right? If everyone pool, the pool won't be able to move. But it's just so big, they cannot tell direction. What will be the result if this is the destination place? Do you think the whole thing is going to move over there? No? Or yes? yes? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Then the question is, how the ants know to go over there? If everyone buys, if they can tell, even if, when we move our furniture, what do we do? Left, go up. We can talk. The ants with their mouths stick on the thing. They cannot talk. There's no way to communicate, and they do not touch each other. Because we have this thing, they just stay there. How do they signal me to move the whole thing to that direction? Is that a fantastic question? Is that... It's very interesting, right? There... People study. And you know what the answer is? The answer is there are some new coming ants gonna touch it. The new coming ants, when they touch it, the whole group, they can sense it. So once they sense it, everyone moves the same direction. So there are always a few outside of the, the, the thing. Once they're going to come to that, they're going to give a push or whatever. And then once that comes in, every ant on the objects, they're going to move along that direction. This is amazing, you know, when you think about it. 
But this is something just want to give you a flavor about how how much an ant can do. How much the ant? This can do a lot of things we really hard for us to imagine. And now the message delivered here is what? They store food in the summer for the winter. The message from this proverb, today's message is the ant knows to prepare for the future. And the way you need to do that to give us. Now there, and we see the teamwork there, right? We see how they communicate. But those are not the message you're going to deliver through the passage today. Today's passage, they what? They know to store food in the summer for the winter. We need to be prepared. So in Proverbs, the message, second message will be, we need to know prepare for the future. And in Proverbs 6, it says, even more clear, it's go to the end, you slugger. The lazy people. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler. Yet they store its provisions in the summer and gather its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you slug? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief, and the scarcity like an armed man. Look at this. What is this cry? How long will you lie there? Will you, when will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hand to rest, and the poverty will come to you like a thief. When you think about thief, what is, what is the thing about thief? The thief will not let you come. They will come, right? First, that's called thief. Who is going to let you, they are going to come to, to do the things? Probably robber, right? I'm come. Make a The thief is something in a hidden way. Before you know it, things come if it's a good thief. That's how it's coming. Poverty will come to you like a thief. This is a called why and why a little slip, a little slump, a little folding of the hand. If you do not be alert, if you do not be alert, and this principle is suitable for our daily life. It's suitable for our daily life. When you think about a man's life, what is a man's life like? People have described the life compared to the four seasons of the weather. Spring is birth and useful years, like you guys. Summer is a manhood and um, maturity years. Autumn is the old age and the decline yes. Winter here is death and the inevitable judgment that follows inevitable judgments that's from God. Winter we you know this is just like that. Because winter we don't produce. Spring we produce, we grow. Summer we stay there. Autumn still already in you know, a decline. This is a description of our daily life. It could be a physically. But every stage when we try to move on, we have to be prepared for the next stage. That's why we have to work hard, have a plan, look further. People try to think about our days in different ways. Typically, many people think the past is the good old days. Everything in the past, especially for adults, our older people, when they think about their life, why, when I, when I was young, you know, 
in the old time. Because when I was young, when we listened to the voice from our parents, do you know what they say? You know, in older time, how good is it? People, they do good manners, they polite, you know, it's, everything is in order. In my age, when I get into be a parent, I thought, well, when we were young, look at how well we behave. Look at the current generation, they you know, try to ignore us, or, you know, many things they, they do not inherit from us. Probably when you were, you, when you guys grow up, you're going to see, okay, when we were there, you know. That's the way people very often stay in the old age. And another way to look at time is, live for today. Just live for today, whatever we have, just live for today, no tomorrow. That is not the teaching from Bible. All people being scared about future. Scared because it is so fearful. But what we have here is we have to work hard and be prepared for the future from the story of the ants. Where is this? Because think about that. If the ants do not work for the winter, what's going to happen? There's no food for winter, right? What are they going to do? Every one of them is going to die. Right? There's no food for the winter. They're going to die if they do need the food in the winter. Some of the animals they do not, right? Hibernate, and then they stay asleep like a bear or a frog. But many of the animals still need the food to consume. And is one of them. They have to. Where is wisdom coming from? from God, right? The ant has no idea what's going to be. Who maintains everything in the end? It's God's design. It is God's design, okay? But man not only has to be prepared for their physical life, physical aspect of their life, retirement, right? Retirement, what else? Money? A house? There is also spiritual part, we have to be prepared for the eternal life. And this is a story about uh, ants and the grasshopper, right? The grasshopper always in summer, they play, they play music and they enjoy life, do not have anything. But in the winter, autumn, they die. They die because they don't have food. And so, when we think about that, that is uh, when we manage our time, we have to think thoroughly how we should do it. There are so many aspects we need to pay attention, not only physically, exams, school life, we also have spiritual, the way, how do we prepare our life to be a grown, mature person. How do we communicate with our new friends, boyfriend or girlfriend in the future? And spiritually, how do we have to be prepared for the church? If you're looking at the spiritual life, we, there are several things we have to be prepared. First, we have to be prepared for the temptation. Is everything going to attack us? These things attack us very often coming from the desire inside of us. We have to be prepared. What is that? In the James, but each one is tempted one by his own evil desire and is dragged away and enticed. We've been dragged away. We have to be prepared because these are things real. Are we ready? Do we have the things? When will be the time for us to get pre us prepared? It's a time when we really, in some place, when we feel safe, feel safe, feel peace, no real bothering. That's the time. Free time. We can think about it. What else? 
to trials. Persecutions, when you be it, claim you are Christian or you try to be a Christian, there's always a text. There's always a text. And this part in John chapter 16 is the time when Jesus tells everything about his, his future death. And uh, all the disciples listened, oh, is that possible? Oh, and he said, I'm telling you this because what's going to happen to you? You have to be prepared clearly. <clears throat> and then we have to be prepared for the second coming of Christ. We have to be holy. Through this whole process, everything in our life try, simply try to make us like Jesus more. To be his true disciples. And when we see him, we could be holy. Prepare your mind for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed as his coming. We're going to meet our Lord. We have to be prepared. And the last, we have to tell other prepare about him. Are we prepared? When we meet anyone, we're going to be able to tell this. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Why you are Christian? Do we have that answer? Because the time is going to come. The time to meet new people is going to come. The time to meet the non-believer is going to come. The time we have to defend our faith is going to come. We have to be prepared before anything happens. But to be prepared, we have to see these things. We know what we should prepare. I think there's a lot. This is uh, only a little bit paste, and uh, hopefully this can give you a, a thinking idea about what we should think about our lives in terms of the preparation for the future. Not only to go to college, not only prepare, those are very short term. Those are important because that each step of those is going to guide us to the, to the future. Every part. But we have to know where is the final place. Because that's going to make us tune. Whether this step is away from God. We have family need to be established for the youth. And we have family need to guide. Every day is a new day. And we are facing another new day. Whether we are prepared. Whether we you look at the ants. Do you see an ants lie there to stay or take a break? Never. They are the busiest one. Every every day they just keep running. Of course, it's not a good example to you know try to people take a break. <laughs> But it's a good example for to encourage people to work hard and be diligent. All right. So this is a message. I think that these preachers and when you look at them next time or every time, read the message, listen to God's voice through this simple thing. It's so clear. Teamwork. Non-resting life. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> but, but those to the people who are lazy, okay? Already. But this is a very lovely. So, so go study ants. Go to nature. You know, there's a journal on nature. It's talk about a lot of amazing things about ants. If you look at them, you're going to see, wow, what amazing design from God. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the wonderful day. Thank you for this morning. And the when we go out to look at the sky, to look at the bird, look at the leaves, everything, uh, we can see your message and your mighty power. And, uh, and the message from the ants, the little preachers, it's really amazing. So hopefully we all can 
get it and keep it in your heart. And every time we see them, as remind us how we should prepare our future, how we should work, and how we should appreciate everything you give us. Pray in Jesus' name.